Hi, welcome to day five. <laughs> Hope you guys are doing well. And um, if you're joining in for the first time, welcome. Um, these spots that you see here are actually um, freshly harvested um, or biopsied rather uh, basal cell carcinoma. So they're in the process of healing, although I have to go back and have surgery on them. I think it's in March. So um, yeah, so thanks for tuning in. That's part of what this is all about is this healing journey of mine, which has been um, <sighs> humbling, I guess you could say humbling. You know, I always want to come on here and I just want to be really optimistic and positive. And I really, for the most part, have certainly embraced this entire experience. Um, for those of you who are returning or have been here and are with me, then thank you very much for being here. And again, for those of you who are new, that's really the whole point to this is to actually just document, um, to offer support as well as receive support because we're all in this world together and um, it's about give and take. And for as much as I um, want to give you I am open to receiving whatever love you have. I, I it, yeah. Um, I can really be honest with you and say that, I mean, I'm listening to, I mean, what I'm doing right now for all of this, um, which is, again, for you, for those of you who are new, it involves uh, breast cancer, skin cancer, osteoarthritis, and um, scoliosis. So I'm taking this one step at a time. In fact, you know, truthfully, um, I'm getting scared. I got surgery scheduled for um, Wednesday for breast surgery and sentinel node biopsy. So that's coming up. Um, you'll certainly hear from me before I go in and um, probably from my bed <laughs> the next day just to keep you updated and in the flow, but like I said, this is really about just offering support as well as receiving. And um, so I always wonder what I'm gonna say when I come on here to do these vlogs, and I really just don't know. I've spent the day um, doing a lot of paperwork. Oh, this is, this is a noisemaker for my dogs when they try to, um, it actually makes a really bad noise, <laughs> loud noise, they don't like the noise. And so if they get rowdy, um, which they can do and um, all I do is just smack it up against the wall and um, it they understand I don't know what it is I've they've never been hit with it but so that's what that was but yeah that's um that's my paperwork there I've just been doing it all day and um, researching actually to be able to do a video here on um, histamine and osteoarthritis. Don't ask me why, I started looking into that and it's significantly um, involved. But I'm not gonna go over that here. Um, I just wanted to say hi. And um, just, yeah, I, I, I really don't have much else to say today. It's, um, it's, been an, it's an interesting journey. You know, I've been paying attention to the way I've been thinking. Um, one of the thoughts that came up for me today um, was about how much anger I've harbored over my life, over things and experiences, and never realized how much it was fueling me. Um, and what I can honestly say right now, because what I do, because I am scared, as I mentioned, I'm just wanting to preoccupy my time with things that actually make me um, feel alive you know, that have meaning. And so I've been painting, um, but the, the research is my thing. I mean, even when I write for All in the Pantheon, which I do that, I am the voice of Circe on All in the Pantheon. When I write that, I even make sure that the information that I provide there is accurate. So accuracy to me is everything. So when I look at, so when I look into research and I investigate all of the stuff that I'm investigating, it's fascinating to me. It just, I mean, seriously, it's like almost, well, it's almost four o'clock here. I mean, the day has gone by so rapidly because I've been sitting here digging. And what I find fascinating, truthfully, is that 
what this all comes down to is the way we do or do not manage our emotional distress. Look, the body is definitely exposed to a lot of crap, a lot of it, and the it's reacting to it. The, if the, to understand these systems, that, you know, and that's where I go, as you probably have figured out, <laughs> um, and or you're learning, that what I do is I go look into what's actually the mechanisms that are causing things to happen. What's the, because the body is fascinating. It goes one way, for instance, it'll produce chemicals for protection and then it's supposed to deactivate that and go back the other way. I mean, it's a very, very interesting process to be observing. And um, at the same time, what I'm learning is this level of mental and emotional distress is huge. Sorry. I was listening to Coyote, sorry. <laughs> um, but it's huge. And like I said, my anger issues have been running deep and I don't realize it. I never, I mean, for years, for years and years and years, I kept it all in. I mean, occasionally I would cry, but what I've learned in my life is if you cry, it's acceptable. If you don't cry, if you express anger as a female, I mean, it's one thing to say I'm angry, okay? And, um, God, I just look like shit. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know if it's the lighting or what it is. My hair looks flat. Um, but anyway, I was taught that you don't express anger. Now, if I cried out of anger, that was okay. And nobody ever really asked me why I was angry or why I was even crying. You know, just get over it. You'll get over it. Everything will be fine. You know, it's kind of like that bandage kind of experience, right? And as I go through this process and experience all of my life right now, all of it, every aspect of my life, I'm noticing a tremendous amount of anger that just kind of all of a sudden just like blah, like I, I just want to vomit it out. I mean, it just like projectile, art, you know, anger. I'm not crazy about it. Actually, not. That's not even, that's a mild statement. I despise it. Despise it. And I have worn this mask most of my life where if I was pissed, you really didn't know it. I went silent. That's how people knew I was angry. And like I said, if it got really, really bad, I would cry, but that would be something I often did by myself because I was so tired of people telling me, just get over it or it'll be fine, it'll pass. You know, this too shall pass, right? But the fact is that the emotions come up and the emotions are there to actually indicate where there are wounds, where things can actually be, where the healing is, re is required. And I never did, I never have, and so now, since my diagnosis, especially since all of it came out this last Monday, um, I, uh, crazy amount of anger and, uh, never realized how much shame I've carried. Never realized how much of a burden I didn't want to be. Never realized how much I rejected love for myself and from others. Um, you know, never really allowed myself to receive. What else was there? Um, and then that's just mental and emotional. And it does, you know, and then of course with the addictions that I've dealt with through drugs and alcohol and even um, disordered eating, all of that really messed with my system. So it's, you know, I can sit here and make jokes about it while my life is finally catching up to me, like, you know, the, all my sun worshiping. But the fact is, is it's not funny because the motivation that caused me to do everything, it might have helped me to survive because let me say this much, since becoming a mother in 35 years ago, um, I learned firsthand what it meant to survive. I was, I just did nothing but protect myself, you know, constantly under attack, constantly. 
that's a whole nother, maybe a whole other documentary. Um, people t trying to take my children, people successfully taking my children, people, you know, and, and it manipulating the, the, the seizure of my children. People wanting to take me in and out of court, telling me I was a bad mom, even though I got, I mean, it was amazing. They took my kids, got my kids back, but I was in and out, literally in and out of court for 20 years. Just put it to you that way. I don't, I don't want to go into all of the <laughs> reasons why I was going in and out of court. Just let me say this much. I walked away every single time with my kids. Nobody, and they didn't have any grounds. I mean, a lot of this, honestly, this, some of the stuff that was said in court was absolute bullshit. I mean, absolute lies. My kids were privy to it. They were sitting there listening to it. They got called into the judge's chambers. A lot of it, one day, this actually happened on a Good Friday. 10 hours on a Good Friday. So that was 20 years of my life. And then I adopted a couple of girls, um, sisters, with tremendous needs and I was not equipped. I was not, I wanted to be a mom to girls. I had boys and I, whew, more, you know. So again, the stress, feeling inadequate, okay? Feeling, you know, ashamed of myself that I couldn't do it or I felt like I couldn't do it. So all of these emotions really made me angry at myself. And so, like I said, a lot of this is coming up now, which I'm happy to release. I, um, I, I don't want to harbor it any longer. I really, really don't. And the point to all of that is the fact that all of this, no matter how much we want to think we've blissed out, right? We've, you know, meditation, exercise, painting, whatever we're doing to distract ourselves from the um, throes of life doesn't necessarily mean that you're actually dealing with this stuff that's been passed on from generation to generation. You know, this is stuff that's passed down. It's not meaning that people come out and go, okay, you're worthless, because that was one of my things. I'm angry at myself for not having, you know, I'm angry, I, I mean, I was even angry at myself because I didn't stand up for myself. I mean, I have people who owe me thousands of dollars, a lot of money, and I never stood up for myself. I'm like, ah, it's all right. Didn't have a backbone. So I get angry at myself for that. And so, again, these aren't messages that people look at you and go, okay, well, you're worthless. You should be ashamed of yourself. Well, that one I did hear a lot of. You should be ashamed of yourself. But you know what I'm saying? It's typically not passed on verbally. It's pretty much passed on through patterns and behaviors and interactions. And what happens is, and it's based on the other individual's belief system. This is how history repeats itself. So if the other individual doesn't think much of themselves, right? And if they're angry and they're, you know, raging or they feel ashamed of themselves or they feel inadequate or what have you, they're going to act out in a way that basically makes you feel the same way. It's called projecting. They project it onto you and... While I know there's a, there's a population of people walking around calling themselves empaths, we all are sensitive. It's not just a few, select few. There's not just a few special people on this planet that are empaths. Each one of us is sensitive. We have the ability to sense. We are actually able to do that, believe it or not, through the olfactory system. If you haven't heard me say this, we have almost 700 olfactory receptors throughout the body. They are considered G-coupled protein receptors. And they respond to, I'm sorry I keep messing with my hair. I just don't like the way it looks right now. Um, but they have the ability to pick up aromatic compounds. Now, bear in mind, an aromatic compound does not mean it has to be something that you can smell. Catecholamines, which are chemicals we produce with neurotransmitters, those are aromatic compounds. And so those are sending signals. We emit them. Okay, so, you know, just like a plant emits chemicals to attract insects, to repel insects, to repel predator, you know, potential threats from bacteria, viruses, or other animals. Animals put off smells. If you ever, you know, if your dogs get to wrestling and they're playing, you can begin to smell them. So we all put off, it's not just pheromones for sex. Got news for you there. We're emitting these chemicals, these catecholamines. As I said, when we're stressed, we are releasing these chemicals 
They are being emitted from us and the people around you are picking up on it. We are sensitive beings, as is all of nature. Nature communicates via chemicals, which means we have, the bodies are consistently talking to one another, even though we may not be saying anything to one another. And although we may be saying something, the body's communicating something else. So what's coming out of here may not be what's actually happening. May not be what's, it may not be honest, shall we say? So the fact is, is that we are all sensitive beings. There's not just a special few empaths. Everybody is sensitive. We have the ability to pick up on these, this stress, these stress hormones. And so for that matter, so when we're talking about people passing on their own belief systems onto other people, it's a fact. And so we have essentially a lineage of thoughts and patterns being passed on from generation to generation. And therefore we now have degenerative disease. And so this is the reason why I look at myself. It's like, what is going on? What has gone on in my life to have me, not because I want to blame anybody. Please hear me that, say that. I'm not blaming anybody. This is old stuff. This is old shit that nobody knew any better. They did the best they could with what they knew. That's the way the world has operated and that's why it'll consistently operate. But if we know better, if we know that we can improve the way we think of ourselves just through this, we have the ability to break those thoughts and, and patterns. Because ultimately who's gonna pay for this is the future generations, not just us. So that's the reason why I'm doing this. Because it's time to stop the nonsense. There's no point in history repeating itself, whether it be in a family line or government, economy, none of it, it doesn't make any difference. We need to stop the patterns. Because what, as Eckhart Tolle says, right here, right now, this is it, this is all we have. Operate from this moment. But the thing is, is to remind yourself, am I worthy? Should I be ashamed of myself? No, I've been living my life, I'm human. It's an important thing for us to stop beating one another up. And especially, and it starts with us. The less we beat ourselves up, the less, you know, we're not gonna feel like beating anybody else up because we're not in that space of like annihilation. So start at home, right here. That's what this is all for today. If this is where I've been looking at it's like, well, what has gone on in my life and what can I be proud of and how hard have I worked and how much can I love myself through all of this? That's the reason why I need to quit picking on my hair right now. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys are doing well. That's it for today. It's a little bit longer than I anticipated, but I'm going to um, finish up my research and get myself ready to do an actual video, like I said, on histamine and osteo. But in the meantime, you guys take care. Thank you very much for being here with me. Until tomorrow. Bye.